Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the first review after this little international break that we had. AFCON is over, <laughs> my African jerseys have been over, uh, back in the closet and so the club season has us again and I'm starting now with uh, Ligue 1 and the Eredivisie because there we had uh, quite some action especially in France. Uh, was very active even during that international break. Also, uh, in case you haven't watched my recent videos and the reviews, I've changed the setup a little bit. I moved the camera a little bit more over so that we can see better the jerseys here on the side, uh, which also means I changed a little bit the uh, ordering. I still have one, two, three, but then I go over four and five, six, and then it's all my shoulder seven, eight, nine. That's how they ordered. And behind me are now the two League 2 teams that I decided because they are not really in the view. Uh, for the Netherlands, it will still go one, two, three. Or in this case, I'm very fair, not uh, one and two. So just as a little heads up, and I need to do this now for all the videos, but you know, I usually sort them a little bit. But now that we see them better, I can do the sorting. Makes, I think, a teeny bit more sense now so just came up with that one um what can i say about uh the leagues that i have i mean um in the era divisie i think i said more or less handed the title now to ajax uh you know just before the break ajax beat psv away from home and now az did the same uh and in addition to some trouble with the coach we will address those um and in league uh, uh, or in france i should say we had a very interesting cup round, uh, quite a few penalties, quite a few upsets I have to say. I was really wondering what's happening in France in many ways. And then a league, uh, 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 quite a few matchups that I have to catch up on, uh, make up match matchups. Um, and you know, uh, convincing performances by Monaco through the entire week now. Um, also PSG for once looked good uh, away to Lille, not so good against Nice at home. Uh, but I think the the weirdest one was definitely, or should we say, is Marseille, who cup, yeah, should have won bigger, then you lose at home to Lyon, and then uh, you get another big win, and you find yourself at the moment in a second spot where you have the feeling that actually uh, OM should hold on to that one. Off to uh, the review of the games. I actually saw quite some from the Eredivisie this weekend. I uh, saw large parts of PSV against Alkmaar. Yeah, it was great that it was right after the Milan Derby where I felt uh, we really well. I said, yeah, let's watch this one. And PSV starts out with a big swirl and got the goal through Obispo and had the numerous chances. However, they couldn't co convert and Martins Indy gets in the 40th and equalizer with more or less the first Alkmaar shot on goal. And that was all the glory for PSV, who had, uh, you know, a lot of headlines coming from uh, Roger Schmidt, who, uh, Schmidt, Schmidt, <laughs> don't you find him, who basically said, no, I'm not going to extend my contract with PSV, because uh, I want to coach, go back to the Bundesliga, which is kind of a little bit of a dick move, but, you know, uh, having had him in uh, the Austrian Bundesliga, uh, he's a great coach, I would say, but he's not a coach where I feel that he is a very likable guy in many many ways and you know at PSV I don't think he got the job really done. I mean he got them a, he got them play a little bit better but in, in, in the end I think he was hired to break the Ajax um, monopoly on the title and that's gonna be hard to get them at least back in the championship Champions League and it doesn't look all that well for him at the moment but you know it's not over quite yet However, uh, that loss was one that really, really, really hurt. I was also surprised that Alkma played in purple away jerseys. Very, it's the same jerseys that Austria Vienna uh, are playing, but for them it makes sense because they are a purple team. Uh, in the Rotterdam Derby, and I'm wearing Feyenoord, uh, Feyenoord make short shrift of Schwatter. This could have been really, really, really ugly. Uh, Coach Kuyo Hambach, uh, uh, Till and then Till 2 in the second half. I was actually looking if uh, my guy Gernot is uh, scoring one. No, he didn't, but uh, rather convincing. And uh, you know, Feyenoord definitely after this disappointing last season, they definitely took the next step. Not yet title contenders at a point in the season, it looked like, a, but they are not quite quite yet. So it was all about Ajax. If they get the win, they have a four point lead against Heracles. 
what else what, what, what do we expect it could have been even higher it was Klassen as uh, Alea and Taylor um, who scored and then Tadic even missed a penalty to, to make it four but in the end I don't think this penalty miss will hurt all that much uh, since as I said they're now uh, no, they're not four points clear on the table they are six points clear on the table six I cannot calculate they're five points clear on the table <laughs> yeah PhD statistics and you cannot do that but you know uh, PSV and Feyenoord um, are the top three and then there's a, a, a lot of a fight for the remaining spots um, as for the upcoming games Ajax actually has an interesting game against Twente who are kind of now aiming for a fourth spot potentially uh, PSV has to go to Vitesse also an interesting game and uh, Feyenoord at Valvac is probably the easiest one out there but before that we also have a cup round PS, uh, PSV already on Tuesday against uh, Breda, then Ajax against Vitesse, the replay of last year's final. Then I said Valwijk and uh, Nijmegen against uh, the Go-Head Eagles. So, you know, interesting stuff. I would expect if the draw goes right, we would get uh, Ajax against whoever in the final in many ways. But, you know, I hope it will not be Ajax PSV in the semi-final because it will be a great final. Um, speaking of cup action, we need to review a little bit of the French Cup as well. Uh, that was last weekend. I did not make a video because, you know, too, too little. But uh, what surprises there? I mean, not against Brest. That was not a big, big surprise. Uh, uh, Blas scoring uh, both goals. Actually, saw the highlights. That's why I'm mentioning that. But then look at the other results. I mean, Amiens against Nancy, maybe a slight upset. But then... Uh, league 2 leaders to lose lose at home to fourth tier side Versailles what that I did not expect at all uh, then Bastia eliminated Reims on penalties okay that can happen Marseille actually should have put that game away uh, Milik gave in the 74th lead and then Makuana uh, equalized at a point where Marseille probably should have led by 2 or 3 uh, good for them is that they win it then in the penalty shot because Ristich misses the second penalty for Montpellier. Then the other uh, big upset is the Bergerac Perigord beat Saint Etienne. And you know, if you want to say, yes, Saint Etienne is really, really bad at, at, at the moment, just hold on a second. I don't know whether they played the second uh, string team or, or, or whatever, but losing at, uh, away from home to a fourth tier side, yes, it can happen in a cup round. But it doesn't look good at all. So we have two fourth tier sides moving on to the quarterfinals. Um, then uh, the big one was loss against Monaco, um, where you know every time Monaco got in front of goal, they scored. Benyeda, Jean Lucas, and Diop in the 29th, it was over. Said pulls one back. Then uh, Kalimuendo uh, in the 53rd, 2 4. They are pressing, they're pressing, and then they get caught on the counter check through Benyeda in the 88th. Game done. Monaco move on. So another big side at least move on. Uh, but the biggest side of them all fails to score anything against Nice. Another paltry performance. It goes to penalties where, yeah, Messi might have uh, made the penalty. Uh, but then Paredes misses, the lower for Nice uh, misses. I mean, at that point, this was one we we, we we two in front. It was a big match, but it was kind of a disappointing match. And then uh, little Simons uh, misses the last penalty and PSG are out of the cup. A competition they have been more or less winning very, very regularly. So uh, we will get a new winner, which makes it a little bit more exciting as well. Um, and... Exciting is also a little, it's in a way exciting is the quarterfinal draw. I mean, Monaco Amiens is not any really exciting because, you know, that uh, should be one-sided. But we have both fourth league tier teams play each other. Perigord, Bergerac Perigord against Versailles. That's going to be interesting. And they're not playing in the same league because uh, one is in uh, 2D and the other one is in 2A. So uh, very interesting. We have a big derby between Nice and Marseille. And the Nantes against Bastia is kind of so and so. So, you know, uh, there's one big matchup. It will be, I think it will be a very interesting uh, cup, especially since we have a fourth tier side, for sure, in the semifinals. Now, I have to apologize to all of you who have watched my last uh, video where I just uh, looked at the weekend's results, completely forgetting that there had been a few makeup games that I didn't even um, count in the table. So I gave you a wrong table as well. I have to make this all up in the stats cast next time. 
uh, round. So uh, the games that I missed is Strasbourg. Ah, I have the new Strasbourg shirt is up there. Two nil win at Clermont Foot. Then uh, we had three makeup games. Uh, one, two were played on the 19th, like the Strasbourg game, and one a week later it had to be twice postponed. Uh, Angers against Saint Etienne. Lille three one over Lorient. Uh, then Troyes a win at Montpellier, who kind of need a little bit floating down, and then Saint Etienne get a win at Angers. Saint Etienne that was not to be expected. Um, and then uh, the biggest makeup game is of course uh, was of course uh, Lyon against Marseille where Guendouzi gave Marseille an early lead. However, laid on Shakiri in potentially his last game for uh, uh, Lyon, because I think uh, Chicago Fire paid 7 million to have him. Go figure. Uh, equalizes with a nice shot. And then uh, Dembele in the in a get a win for Lyon. And you thought, Lyon, maybe they can get something going. This is kind of a tough loss from, 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 from Marseille in a make-up game. Um, however, then over the weekend it all turned around. Marseille found themselves down 2 0 against Angers in the 11th minute, but then Milik uh, uh, scores a treble and everything's all fine again. Uh, so it was uh, 3 2, no, 2 2 at halftime. It was Cray Cray's game 8 and 11th, 2 0 for Angers. 18th, 20, 21st is 2 2, and then in the uh, second half, Milik, Milik, and Under uh, making it 5 2 for Marseille. So Marseille recovered well, Lyon didn't. Absolute no show uh, at Mon Monaco, where Jean Lucas and Vincent Benyet are just uh, toyed with, with, with them. Yeah. Lyon looked awful in this game. So, yeah, uh, roller coaster ride for both Lyon and Marseille, but a little bit more for Marseille because you had this so and so showing against Montpellier, then you lose to Lyon, then you win big against Angers, and you look, kind of look in second place. Really big showing for PSG against Lille. Didn't really expect it. Um, Danilo scores the go-ahead goal. That's when Botman, uh, yeah, I would love him to have him at Milan, uh, scores the equalizer. But gotta be said, a very bad mistake by uh, Don Rumor. Then Kim Pembe immediately there after 30 seconds. And this was happening more or less the same time they add the AFCO file, so I had a kind of a second screen there. Uh, makes it 2-1. Um, Messi scores the third. He hits with a free kick the crossbar again. This is his friend, and then Danilo and Mbappé make it a very, very convincing score. Right? This was for the first time in a long time that PSG actually looked good. So yeah, uh, gotta see how this will be going uh, further. Uh, the next round with PSG against Rennes on, fri on Friday, because we have the Champions League coming. So uh, that that's an interesting one for sure. Um, other than that, if I look now, Marseille has to play at Metz, should be a win. Lyon against Nice, I think, sounds that, that those are the two that kind of uh, beat up on Marseille players, so that could be interesting as well. And um, as, as, as I said, we have a cup round midweek come, 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 coming up, so loads of stuff happening. So yeah, that was it for me. Loads to cover, that's why it will be a longer video, but I think it's fine. Um, give me your view of the things that were happening in France and the Netherlands uh, over this uh, extended period now where I didn't make a video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and click that little bell so in order to stay updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. With that, have a good day.